if you are preparing for government examination then you must be aware about what to study and what not to study however it is equally important if not more important than this that how to study and how not to study a lot of student make this mistake every year of not understanding or not giving enough importance to the fact that the focus on how to study and how not to study has to be given equal focus as you give focus to what to study and what not to study today i'm not going to talk about what you need to study for rbi seb or nabard what you need not study what to prepare what not to prepare all these things are secondary the first important target when you start your preparation or even if you you are in the middle of your preparation is to remind yourself continuously okay this is how i am uh, supposed to study and these are the things that i'm not supposed to be doing otherwise i will get into a vicious cycle and it will be very very difficult for me to come out of it keeping that in mind let's discuss the do's and don'ts if you're preparing for government examinations that you need to do or that you need to keep in mind i will first start with the do's because it will set a positive mode and you will be able to motivate yourself when when you go forward with the video okay these are the things that i am doing these are the things that i am not doing but i'm supposed to be doing so let's start doing these things the first one is previous year questions previous year questions are always the bible for any government examination whatever examination you might be writing let's say you're writing upsc you're writing rbi you're writing sebi you're writing nabard you're writing ugc dsbsp any examination it doesn't matter the problem arises when the organizations that are taking your exam do not give you the exam give, do not give you the question paper itself this happens in ibps this happens in rbi sebi and nabard they don't hand out the question paper which i believe is a crime but this is how it is and we have to make sure that we are able to adapt ourselves to how the conditions are so keeping this in mind every year i go to the students as they come out of the examination hall and i try to gather as many questions as possible all the videos of previous year questions along with the pdfs are already available on the website as well as on my youtube channel pertaining to the exams that i take okay so it is important that you give the required importance to previous year questions you have to what do you have to do now uh, rather than just focusing on reading the previous year question once you have to Force your force yourself to go back to the previous year questions again and again. Just keep going back to the previous year questions again and again. Let's say once in a week, once in three days. Just go back to all the previous year questions, flip through them. You will end end up learning something new from those questions. It will give you an idea about the pattern of the examination. It will give you an idea about the tone of the examination. It will give you an idea about how the examiner thinks, and that is the key to success. to cracking any government examination okay so the first and most important thing is previous year questions now make sure because majority of these questions are memory based so on a lot of websites you will find incorrect questions incorrect previous year papers make sure that you are able to identify the genuine ones from the not so genuine ones it's important okay the second do is daily targets it's very very important now it is also connected with a don't and i will be discussing about that shortly but let's stick to daily targets right now the reason that i've created a daily plan for you guys for rbi and sebi and nabard daily plan as well as ugc plan is coming up very shortly is to help you understand the importance of daily targets and to help you create those daily targets for yourself majority of us have not been taught this in our schools and in our colleges uh, that we have to create some kind of daily routine for ourselves some kind of daily targets for ourselves and focus on being productive in an entire day but when you are preparing for such competitive examinations it becomes very important that you have a to do list every morning okay these are the things that i'm required to do these are the things that i will be finishing today itself no matter how much time it takes and then you keep on increasing or decreasing you keep on modulating or working with your daily targets depending upon your performance okay so the second do is daily targets always have either a paper based or an excel list of daily targets with yourself the third do is daily or weekly revision now this is another problem with our education system in our schools as well as in our colleges 
we've never been taught how to revise and whether to revise or not. In fact, in our colleges, what we do is we pick up the books uh, two weeks probably before the examination. We just uh, go through the previous year questions, 10 years that we call or Dukki Jo Hum Bolte Unko. And then based upon that, we just go and write the examination. Now, the same approach will not work here. You have to focus on revising whatever you have already done. Why? Because the sheer amount of syllabus or the volume of syllabus is so large that if you don't revise, you will end up forgetting the things that you read one month back. And therefore, it becomes important that every week or every day, depending upon your comfort, you're going back to things that you've read and you're asking yourself, you're questioning yourself whether you remember those things or not. You have to critically analyze your performance every day or every week. And the best way to do that is revision. The next do, which I've already talked about in a lot of other sessions as well, is to write mocks and to analyze mocks. Now, there's a six step process which I had created uh, to help students analyze their mocks because what happens is majority of us know how to write mocks. We just go and we just take a mock, we just spend two hours on it and we, then we just look at, look at the score and judge ourselves whether we are good enough or not. But the job of you as a student does not end there. In fact, the job of you as a student, as a successful aspirant or a serious aspirant has just started with the process of writing a mock. The next and the more important step that you have to take is to analyze your mock. So, ek bar wo video check kar lo where I have mentioned how to analyze your mocks. If you don't analyze your mock, the entire process or activity of writing the mocks is actually a waste. So write mocks and analyze your mocks in order to judge your own performance by yourself rather than comparing yourself with others. That means I'm not good enough. Why are you getting 70 and not 100? Why is your competitor getting 100 and not 70? Identify that gap. Identify the reason for that gap. And that is when you will be able to improve your performance in the next test. Okay, that's very important. So that's a very important do that you have to keep in mind. Use Pomodoro. This is a technique which requires a lot of discipline. Even I go back and forth. One day I'm following Pomodoro for a week. I'm doing it. And then I realize that I've slipped past Pomodoro into my old routine. And then I have to force myself to uh, follow Pomodoro, Pomodoro yet again. But this is a very important technique, a very useful technique to increase your productivity, to be more disciplined. What does this technique say? You identify, let's say 25, 525. Let's say I've created a 525 technique. Sorry. Let's say I've created a 525 technique under Pomodoro. Now 525 says that I will study for 25 minutes and then I will take a gap, take a break of five minutes. I will probably drink tea. I will probably go out and meet uh, my family members. I'll play with my dog. I just go out in the sun and sit for five minutes, whatever you want to do, it's fine. But it has to be limited to five minutes and not 50 minutes or something like that. Don't go back to your phone or social media in those five minutes. Use those five minutes to refresh yourself rather than to burden yourself with information or things that actually don't matter that much. Okay, so 25 minutes, you study, take a break for five minutes, get back to studies another 25 minutes, take a break for five minutes. Do this five, six times, your three hours are gone and then you can relax. So this will be, bring in uh, the habit of, uh, you know, being more disciplined with your studies. And at the same time, it will make sure that you're productive in those six small, small pockets. So the first packet is 25 minutes. You are very productive. You take a break, you go back 25 minutes. Your productivity is again high. You take a break, you go back to that study packet of 25 minutes, your productivity is again high. You take a break. This is how you follow up. Okay. Very important technique requires a lot of dedication, requires a lot of discipline, but that is your objective. Your objective is to be disciplined, is to be dedicated, is to crack your government examination. And Pomodoro is one of the most scientifically proven and successful techniques in making sure that you're able to crack the examination. Enjoy your studies, very important. Majority of us are so burdened by the idea of clearing the examination, becoming an IVPS officer, becoming an RBA grade B officer, becoming a lecturer, becoming uh, a SEBI grade A officer. 
that we forget to enjoy the moment, enjoy the present. And that is something that I want to focus upon again. Enjoy your studies. The moment you start enjoying your studies, the moment you start enjoying more knowledge will be the moment when you will be liberated from the clutches of taking it as a burden. Because the more you uh, take it as a burden, the more you will be burdened uh, you know, by the books and you will stop enjoying it and you will stop remembering it. You will stop recalling it. Your productivity will also go down and your final performance will also go down. So remember, whatever you're studying, try to enjoy whatever you're doing. Okay, try to enjoy your studies, try to enjoy more knowledge, try to enjoy more information. That is the only way out from the government examinations classes. Okay, let's now move to the don'ts, which are as important and I think even more important than the do's. Because if you just focus on, focus on not doing the don'ts, then automatically you will start focusing on doing the do's. Okay. The first one is hours of study. Very, very important. Do not at any point of time measure your performance based upon hours of study. Every day students ask me, sir, how many hours do I need to give in order to clear the examination? Brother, your six hours might not be as good as my two hours or my six hours might not be as good as your two hours. So every person is different. Every human being is different. Every human being's Ability to recall stuff, to remember stuff, to take in the information and to remember that information is different. So you have to give yourself credible <coughs> importance, your brain credible importance so that you are able to understand about what you are and what you are not. And if you start dividing your performance based upon hours of study, you are actually jumping off uh, that important aspect. Okay, therefore, do not measure your performance based upon hours of study. Measure your performance purely based upon daily targets that you create. Okay, my target today is to cover one third of important finance and banking terms that have been given by SIR. That is my target for today. Let's say I was able to create, able to cover only half of that. Okay, I realize by the end of the day, I am probably not as productive, but I will be more productive tomorrow. End with a positive note. And tomorrow I will try and cover the remaining half and also some part of the next day's target. So increasing your productivity or focusing on increasing your productivity the next day. Okay. So never focus on hours of study. Always focus on daily targets and that will automatically take away your focus from hours of study. I hope you understand this. Next one, limit social media. One of the most important aspects, I think. Uh, Mr. Chetan Bhagat also recently came out with a video on the same thing as to how uh, your phone is eating up your life. If you just have the guts to open up uh, in the in everyone's phone, there is an uh, there is a there is a section of how much time you're spending in the phone called as screen time. If you just have the guts to open that, just open it and see it for yourself. I see it for myself when every day uh, I have taken it down to two hours, but even two hours is very very high so so out of 24 hours i'm probably sleeping for eight hours so i'm left with 16 hours ghante mein workout karta 15 hours i'm spending probably two hours in eating and freshening up uh, you know taking bath wo sab kar liya. how much time 14 bache the na 14 mein se do ghata diye 12 ghante 12 mein se do ghante hata diye sida for uh, checking my phone 10 hours now i have only 10 hours and if i had uh, you know, one and a half hours extra from those 12 hours, then I would have much more time to be more productive. Okay. So, in 10 ghante mein se mein bahut sari cheeze travel kar raha hon, 2 3 ghante travel mein chale jate hain. 7 hours left. Okay. Now, do you expect yourself to be studying in those 7 hours? Because all these extra things that you're doing are just, you know, mandatory things. They're not luxuries. They're just mandatory things. You need time for yourself also. So, okay? coming back to the same thing. So, if you have these two hours extra, or a lot of students are you know having a screen time of four hours, five hours. So the only way of getting away from your phone is to limit social media use. Keep your phone in another room while you're studying. If you have one room flat, then keep your phone in, switch it off. Nobody's going to die, nobody's going to get hurt while the phone is switched off. There is no emergency. 
just tell your brain that there is no emergency at all the emergency is that you need to get down and study okay keep your switch it off keep it in a drawer and open it again while you're done with six pomodoros in a go something like that has to be done in order to make sure that you're productive that you're not strength lengthening your preparation cycle to three years four years and when you start preparing in one year itself bang you're able to clear the exam okay so limit social media usage as much as possible now when i say social media usage i mean only the non important ones of course there are a lot of important things that you need to use that you need to uh, uh, you know tell yourself or use for example i use probably 30 minutes of wikipedia every day through my phone i just like doing it i just like reading more, more and more new stuff and i share that on community post as well regularly so that is something that gives me more information gives me more awareness about what is happening around me about things that i uh, probably might have ignored in my life so that kind of social media usage is good okay however spending a lot of time on facebook chatting with your friends spending a lot of time on whatsapp on telegram is actually used so that is number 2 don't third one don't rely solely on telegram pdfs and youtube videos solely that is the keyword here okay is rely on pdfs is rely on youtube videos but that should not be your only method of preparation your only way of preparation that is an addition to whatever you are preparing for example i come out with youtube videos every day on uh, you know current affairs every morning then uh, probably once in two days i come out with youtube session sessions which are mcq series practice questions now those are addition to your preparation so they are going to be going to be useful however if you start relying solely on them for your preparation it's going to be counterproductive okay the next one is impatience very very important when you're writing government examination or when you've decided that you're going to get into government sector through these examinations you have to be patient you have to give yourself time you have to enjoy your studies you have to have your personal life as well simultaneously going but at the same time make sure that you're productive in your studies as well and that requires a lot of patience it's an investment that you're making in your life and therefore you need to be patient aisa nahi ki abhi prepare karna shuru kiya 2 mahine mein mere ko result chahiye i need to get in rbi within 2 months not possible at all probably if you're too smart then you might be able to do it but those are exceptions and that is not the rule so be patient mentally psychologically enjoy your studies enjoy the patience of you know the the activity or enjoy the process of developing patience with this entire activity okay and the last and the most important burden yourself do not burden yourself with the studies so much that you get into depression a lot of students call me every day and i spend probably 30 40 minutes guiding students telling them to be positive and not to take this at the end as the end of life okay do not burden yourself with the act of clearing the examination with the act of uh, uh, you know becoming an officer in some organization that you forget that there is only one life that you have so you have to enjoy your life you have, you have to be honest with yourself enjoy your life enjoy every day as it is enjoy your studies but do not burden yourself uh, with the studies so much that you forget how to enjoy your life ask yourself uh, am i actually curious right now do i actually want to study your brain will automatically start telling you yes i want to study i want to spend time with these books and make sure that whatever target i have given to myself for the next one year i want to complete those targets so do not burden yourself do not uh, you know push yourself so much that you burn out or you get into a depressed state okay enjoy your time enjoy your studies enjoy every moment of your preparation you are not going to get it back after 5 years when you are already working in some organization you will look back and probably think oh those were great times i had so much pressure and even then i was trying to figure out how to be most productive in my preparation so those were great times i had fun with my friends i learned new things and those are the things that you will probably miss as well so there's a lot of nostalgia going to be attached with this time period so enjoy it as much as possible be productive at the same time but do not forget that these times are not going to come back and you have only one life so enjoy the moment as much as possible i'm very sure now uh, you have a good list of do's and don'ts 
I will keep sharing, uh, you know, more do's and don'ts uh, over community post on YouTube. And I'm very sure uh, those small, small things will help you be more productive, be more positive in your preparation and make sure that you're able to come closer to your targets every day and your bigger target of clearing these examinations at the end of the year. All the very best, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.